Hello and welcome back to the Azure DevOps series on the Codress Legacy channel. In today's video, we'll be exploring how to do Selenium UI testing in the continuous deployment pipeline for our React.js application. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you've been watching my previous videos, as long as you want to learn how to do Selenium UI testing in Azure DevOps, this is the video for you, okay? For those of you who have been following along, that's really great and you're about to learn how to add yet another feature in our continuous deployment pipeline. Okay, so let me just talk about our project briefly, where we are, what we're doing. So here we have this React.js application that's been deployed using Docker to Azure DevOps, the Azure App Service. Okay, this is our URL. So if I type in my email and password, this will log us in. Okay, I'm not gonna do this yet because I want to do this through UI testing. So what exactly is UI testing and what is Selenium? Well, UI testing is basically a technique where we test the actual UI of the deployed live website, in which case this is our live website and we're gonna be testing it in an automated fashion. We're gonna be testing the, you know, like a user, for example, logs in, he enters a username and password and then clicks the button, sign in, which, which takes him to the home page. We're gonna be testing this in an automated way. We're gonna make Selenium, the UI testing library, automate this feature. It's gonna pretend basically to be a human. It's gonna enter the email and password. It's gonna log in and then it's gonna test whether the login was successful or not. Basically, it's gonna be using correct credentials so we know that if the login fails, then there's some other problem in the website, like maybe um, the login feature is down, the server is down, something like that, okay? So that's what UI testing is, and Selenium is a means of doing, performing UI testing, okay? So let's begin. How are we gonna do, do this? Well, Selenium is a framework or a library that's available in many different languages. It's available in at least four languages that I know of, Python, .NET, uh, Java, and JavaScript. Now, I have the most experience using Selenium in Python, and I've also found it the easiest to use in Python, um, but you guys can use it in whichever language you want to. Uh, Azure has a lot of support for like .NET because it's Microsoft, and then JavaScript is also a popular option. Uh, but Python, again, is what I'm going to use in this video because I'm most familiar with it and it's also the most easiest to perform, okay? And you don't even need to have Python set up to actually do and, you know, follow along with this video. Let me show you how. I'm going to go over to this window where I have the code written for a Python Selenium test case. So this is a combination of the Python unit test library and Selenium. So... I'm not going to go into the details of the Python specific stuff in here because you you guys can do this in whichever language you want to. It's just going to change a bit from, you know, it's, it's going to change a bit here and there. So let me just discuss the things that are very Selenium focused and which have Selenium syntax because the Selenium syntax doesn't change across different languages. Okay, it's like 90% the same. So here we have it here. Okay, the Selenium code. So here we get from our live website. This is the URL of our website. Then we locate elements. We need to locate elements so that we can then interact with them. We commonly um, locate elements using the ID. The ID is almost always a unique identity. Actually, I think it always is a unique identity, a unique identifier. So go over here, inspect. I just want to show you the ID. You see this, this input class over here? The ID is email, okay? And similarly, the password, the password entry box over here has the ID of password. The button over here has the ID of, okay, I can't see any ID here, in which case we resort to other, other techniques, which I'll show you in a minute. So we get the element by its ID, which is email. Then we send it these keys, okay? We send it this value which is a valid credential, by the way, that's gonna work. It's gonna do a correct login. So then we locate the password. We locate the password entry field. Then we enter the value one, two, three. Then we locate the button. 
Now, since the button did not have an ID, okay, that's probably my mistake. I should have made an ID in there, but uh, there isn't. So what we can do instead is use the text to locate that button. So what we've done here is located using expat the button with the text of sign in. Now, and by the way, if you're interested in learning a lot of Selenium, especially in Python, I have videos on this on my website, uh, sorry, on YouTube, and I also have many tutorials on my website. So I'll include some links in the description below if you're interested in learning Selenium uh, in detail, okay? Anyways, so once we locate the button, we're gonna click it, okay, dot click. Then we wait a bit, and then we, okay, let me first simulate an actual login. Okay, before I show you what the next part does. So if I do sign in, it's going to sign in and this is the home page. Now, uh, how do we know whether we've logged in successfully or not? How does Selenium know? Because we can see, we're, we're humans, we can see that we've logged in. But how does Selenium know we've logged in? Well, what we commonly do, uh, it's an industry standard, Okay, it's not a hack or anything. What we do is look for an element on the page that will render if the login has completed. So in this case, we can just look at this home uh, heading. Okay, this heading of home. This ho home heading will only appear if we're on the home page. And if we're on the home page, this means we've successfully logged in, right? So what we're gonna do here is look for the home page, okay? look for the element with the text of home, the H3 heading with the text of home, okay? Then if this heading is displayed, okay, using this is the is displayed method, if it's true, if it evaluates to true, then this assert, uh, it's a Python thing, um, then this test case will prove true, okay? So that's the gist of it without explaining the Python specific stuff in here. Now what I'm gonna do is copy this, okay? I'm, I'm going to keep this copied and I'm going to go over to our release pipeline. Okay, and I will show you how to do this for, uh, I will show you a little bit how to do this for other languages like JavaScript. Give me a minute. So I'm going to add a new stage in here. And I'm just going to do an empty job. I'm going to set this up myself. So UI testing with Selenium. That's what I'll call it. Then I'm gonna open this up. Or let's just remove that, let's keep it simple. So I'm gonna go here into tasks. Then I'm going to do command. Or you, you know what, I'll show you how to do this with JavaScript. Or we'll do the Python one first actually. So we can get some output first. So do command line. And in command line, I'm going to install the libraries that I'm using, okay? So I'm using Selenium, and I'm using this other library called Web Driver Manager. I'm also using these two, but they're included by default in Python, so I don't need to include them specifically. So I'm just gonna do this. And pip install Web Driver Manager. Okay, now I'm going to create a new task where I, I'm i going to search for Python. I need to run a Python file. Now you have two options here. You can uh, either do file path or inline. If you do file path, then basically this allows you to browse through your repo, okay? Um, basically allows you to browse through the output of your CI pipeline. So for example, this requires you to like in your repo, in your GitHub repo, to put the Python file here somewhere. So then you can output it to the CD pipeline. But this is a bit complicated. Well, not complicated, it's just a bit long. So an easier solution is to just do this in line and you can just paste all the code in here, okay? If you don't have any complicated code, I would prefer this option. But if you do have complicated code, like, you know, may maybe several files or something, so then you can create a folder in here called tests and then you can put your Python file in there and then, you know, you can use the file path option here to access it basically. Okay, so this is how we do it 
in Python. I'm just going to run this, then I'll show you how to do this for Node, for JavaScript. Save and OK. And then create a release. And create. So now, now it's queued. In we can view the logs. This is going to take some time, so I'll just pause this until it's complete. All right, so the first stage is done, the deploy Azure service. Okay, now the UI testing is in progress. Let's check the logs for it. Okay. All right, job has been initialized. Now it's downloading Selenium. The pip install command, most likely downloading its dependencies and stuff. All right. And there we go, our Python script, our run a Python script command has completed. Let's just open up the logs. And you can see here, ran one test in 22 seconds. And it says, okay. Basically, that's a success. So there we go. We just uh, ran our tests. We did UI testing. We've tested the login feature. So as promised, I'll show you how to do this, or I will show you what the process would be like for uh, JavaScript, because I'm also familiar with JavaScript. I'm not very really familiar with Java uh, or uh, .NET. I've used them in the past, but not enough. So let me show you how we would do this with uh, JavaScript. I'm just going to delete this, okay, and delete that. So what you would want to do is um, add npm, sorry, first node. You're going to want node node tool installer. Basically, this is a setup node. So you can set up whichever node version you need, like 18, which is what I'm using in my React project. And just do 18 over there. That was just the title. This is the actual version. So then you're going you're gonna to want to do npm uh, install. Okay. Now, again, this kind of depends on um, what you're doing and how you're setting it up. You could uh, do npm install in here. Or um, if you have like a proper application or something, or what you could do is a custom command where you do install, for example, Selenium. I'm not too familiar with what commands you would need to run exactly, but whichever commands you need to run, like install Selenium, or I think Mocha is a, uh, is a framework that's commonly used with Selenium in JavaScript. So you would want to do like install Mocha etc uh, etc et so just do that in, he in here you know chain those together like this and then you would want to do uh, an another one of these and then you would run your command a another custom command and for example run test this is what I use for jest uh, jest test cases for my react application that we did in a, in a previous video in the series npm run test. So this is what it would look like somewhat for JavaScript. Okay, just to give you guys an idea if you're interested in doing that. I hope to see you guys in future videos because we've been continuing the series for quite a few videos and each time we make our uh, pipeline even better. We keep adding more and more features. So I do hope to see you guys in a future video where we maybe implement even more amazing things. Okay, because we're not stopping here. We're going to explore other things. I am planning one video where we don't use Docker because this video, uh, this series has been using Docker so far. So I'm planning a video where we do not use Docker and instead use, you know, normal a, a normal app service. So do stick around for that. Okay. And let me just complete this and save it again in line. There we go. Cool. Save. All right. So see you guys in the next video.